Welcome to the Edge Market Update for the close on December 29th, 2023. And today was the last trading day of the year of 2023. Uh, corn was down for the year about 30%, which was the highest level in about the past decade. Um, we, we had in, inflation was decreasing and oil prices also were down quite a bit this year compared to last year. So kind of took the inflationary trade away and that's really what happened on the corn. Soybeans also uh, were lower on the year, not quite as significantly a drop as corn. Um, but hopefully uh, we can start to find some good support levels here. It looks like we're trying to carve out a longer term bottom uh, in these commodity markets. Um, but a lot depends on weather in South America. Uh, that's why commodities sold off this week uh, with expected rains in the short term forecast and also as we move into January in South America, more normal weather conditions are expected. Um, we also have some uh, slightly bullish news fundamentally for corn as uh, U.S. corn exports should have pretty good demand as we head into 2024. Brazil is out of exportable corn. That's what really sunk our markets this year. They had a large second Safrina corn crop last summer that China really bought up and just had a huge supply of corn. Um, so hopefully we will be the world dominator in corn exports now through about the middle of next year. But as we move on to the charts, we close the year on March corn at $4.71. Uh, we uh, rallied a little bit to start the week, met resistance at the 20-day moving average, and fell into today, Friday, and closed at $4.71. We're kind of still in the middle of this uh, between resistance and support of this long-term wedge that was formed uh, starting in the middle of July and we've just stayed within this wedge this whole time. Uh, at some point this wedge is going to run out of room for price to trade in between so if we don't uh, th and that would be by the middle of next month so if we don't make a significant move by then we might stay within this but once we do get out the move should be powerful. Um, so support right now for next week will stay at about 468 down to 465 a bushel and resistance will stay about 480 a bushel uh, a little bit less as we go into next year uh, maybe down to 475 so if we could break out above there the first target would be four dollars and 85 cents that's where the 50-day moving average is and then we have some more resistance in the mid 490s um, ultimately, I would really at least like to see $5.20 trade uh, before, you know, making any more old crop sales. Um, but we, we have a lot, of, a lot of work to do before we can even consider that. Volume was very low this week as traders were out uh, with their families on vacation. You can see the volume was so much lower than uh, you know, in the past, back in November. Um, but strength indicators, we still have some negative divergence at play. We end the week uh, at a slightly weaker point on strength. Money flows, we traveled higher last week uh, and to start this week, but we ended up peaking and, and we're headed lower with the weakness in price. And long-term momentum, we still main rel uh, remain relatively flat in negative territory. So hopefully next year we can start to climb back to neutral and maybe even positive territory. Uh, that will maybe give us a, a forecast of when we should be uh, potentially making some more old crop sales. Moving on to new crop corn, we close the year at $5.03. This is the, the December 24 contract. And we are above support here at $5 down to $5.98. Um, close below all the major moving averages we track, the 9 days at $5.05, the 20 days at $5.08, and the 50 days at $5.11. So that should prove to be pretty good resistance as we head into next year. Um, also have some trend line resistance here in that 512 to 510 range as we get into the first week of January. Uh, but big key support is this 501 to 5 or 498 support. If we go below there, our next stop would likely be down at the July lows of 491 a bushel. Um, again, volume was very low this week, uh, but same thing. Strength indicators ended a little weaker on the year. Money flows also turned back down, and we still remain in a negative trend on long-term momentum. So uh, at least we'd really like to see us get back to the neutral level as a goal 
uh, in early next year. Moving on to old crop soybeans. We're on the March 24 contract. We closed the week and the year at $12.98, right at this long-term trend line here, all the way dating back to late June. So this is very key support. Uh, if we close below there uh, on a daily close or especially a weekly close next week, really could see us start attacking um, some lower numbers here. So if we do fail next week, first target would be 1282 and then below there would be 1262 which was the low in late June. Um, so hopefully this level can hold next week. It really all revolves around the Brazilian weather as we enter a three-day weekend, um, but we closed right at this long-term support. Resistance would first be at $13.15 for the nine-day moving averages, and then we have the 20-day moving average along with this trend line resistance at about $13.25, and that's going to keep decreasing next week. So um, that's some big resistance we have to overcome in the short term if we want to have the opportunity to get back in the middle of this long-term range that we've been in since late June. Um, so the 50-day moving average is at $13.43. That would be a good target to start. Um, but obviously, if we want to get back to the top of that range around $14, we have a lot of work to do. We need some fundamental bullish news to give us some positive trading volume uh, to get us back up to that point. Um, again, we're, we've been in a long-term decline in strength indicators here on soybeans ever since we made that spike high back in November when we had some sell signals on the market gauges. The money flows, we, we did move higher to start the week, uh, but we did, with that negative price action, start to move lower again and trending towards a weaker position there. Long-term momentum, we are in a negative trend line as well under the neutral line. Um, so hopefully we can start to make our way towards neutral again as we start the new year. And to finish up with new crop soybeans, the November 2024 contract, we closed the year at $12.45. We did fail uh, below this intermediate support all the way back from September uh, that we've been tracking. We did close below that today. Um, so the next big uh, support is right here at $12.35. Uh, we had a 12.33 and a half low in early July as well. So that uh, will hopefully hold as good long-term support if we do uh, have to test that early next year in 24. Um, and hopefully we can bounce from there. If we do get back above uh, this line here, we can hopefully test the nine-day moving average. That's at 12.62. Uh, we got some trend line resistance along with the 20-day moving average coming in at about $12.70 a bushel. And to get above there, back in the middle of this long-term range, just like old crop soybeans, uh, we're, we're going to need some bullish volume. Uh, hopefully, you know, it does dry up a little bit in Brazil just to get us back above these important uh, resistance levels as we, as we move into next year. Strength indicators, you know, negative divergence ever since those uh, sell signals on the market gauges back in the middle of November. Money flows moved higher this week, also peaked and are moving lower. And then again, long-term momentum turned lower back in late November, and we've been uh, on a steady decline ever since. Not quite sharply as new crop or old crop soybeans, um, but we are negative and would like to get it back above that neutral reading there. But Again, um, thank you guys for your business this year. Really appreciate it. And, and we had a good year um, yield-wise. Uh, price obviously wasn't exactly what we wanted, um, but we had some good yields, and that kept revenues higher. Um, as we move into next year, uh, excited to keep working with everybody, and hopefully these markets will turn back higher, and we will keep everybody up to date as, uh, as we navigate uh, these fast-paced markets and everything going on in the world at the same time. So have a happy new year with your family, and thank you for watching.